in this video, I'm going to go through an example of a two proportion Z interval, a two proportion Z interval. So the idea is we have one proportion, we have another proportion from two different populations. We're going to find the difference between these proportions. We're going to try and figure out how big is that gap between my two proportions. What's that difference there? And we're going to estimate it through a confidence interval, okay? So I've already worked through this problem um, to try and save some time on this video, but I will explain all pieces as we go throughout and kind of what's going on there. So let's get to it. Students at a large high school wanted to investigate the difference in the proportion of students who participate in activities, sports at the high school. A simple random sample of 130 seniors was taken and 73 indicated that they participate in activities and sports. While a simple random sample of 100 juniors was taken and 51 indicated that they participate in activities and sports. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the difference in proportion of seniors who participate in activities and, and proportion of juniors who participate in sports activities, etc. Okay, so the idea is we're going to figure out a proportion of seniors who do these activities, proportion of juniors who do these activities, and I want to find the difference between the two. How big is that gap between the two? And estimate it for the entire population. So I'm going to have uh, two samples that I'm going to work off, but we're trying to estimate for the populations, how big is the difference between seniors who participate and juniors who participate. So when we're doing confidence intervals, we're going to be going through panic, right? Parameters, assumptions, name it, interval, and and uh, context. But the first thing I really do is I kind of off to the side pulled out relevant information. So I recognize this was a two proportion situation because I have two different proportions. So whoops, I talked about X1 and N1, 73 seniors out of 130 seniors, which is a P hat of 0.56. I had 51 juniors out of 100 total juniors there uh, in my sample for a P hat of 0.51. So I pulled out relevant information first. Then I jump into panic and away we go. So first thing I did, parameters. P1 is the proportion of seniors who participate in activities and sports. P2 is the proportion of juniors who participate in activities and sports. And that's what I'm trying to find the difference of. Before I can actually do the mathematics around this problem, I need to make sure my assumptions are in place. I need to make sure things are approximately normal so that when I'm using Z's scores and stuff like that, everything's going to work out fine in, in that confidence interval formula. So three things I check. Independence. Both samples were a simple random sample. So independence, you need to check it for both. Both were randomly selected samples. 10%. Each sample is less than 10% of the population. So I'm hoping uh, the 130 seniors is less than 10% of all seniors. 100 juniors is less than 10% of all juniors. Um, I think in this school or just in general. Um, the third assumption is the one that I really, really pay attention to. It switches based on what you're doing between mean problems and proportion problems. And then even inside the proportions, you need to pay attention. The common theme is yes, we would love to do NP and NQ, but we don't actually know what P or essentially Q is. So if you don't know P, you use P hat instead. If you don't know Q, you use Q hat instead. So we need to check N P hat is greater than or equal to 10 and N Q hat is greater than or equal to 10 for both. So what I'm checking here is I did N1 P hat 1, N1 Q hat 1, N2 P hat 2, N2 Q hat 2. And I checked it for all of them to make sure they're all at least 10. So that means my sample is large enough. So both my samples are large enough. Because of this, I know the formula for two proportion Z interval is going to work. I can proceed with that. So I'm doing a two proportion Z interval. I'm on the name step now. Um, I am doing seniors minus juniors. So I'm taking the seniors minus the juniors and finding and estimating what is that difference? You know, what's the difference in proportion there? So the formula here, I've talked about it in prior videos. It's P hat one minus P hat two plus or minus Z star. And then inside the square root here, I have P hat one, Q hat one over N one plus P hat two, Q hat two over N two. So I plugged in all my numbers. 
The Z star, remember that's entirely based on your confidence. So I had a 95% confidence. So I'm gonna use a Z star, a critical value of 1.96, 1.96. Um, I did use my calculator and I did a two proportion Z interval in my calculator, which gives me this interval. Uh, negative 0.0784 to positive 0.1814. Okay, so that's great, but what we wanna do is the C part of panic. Bring this together on what does this mean? So we are 95% confident. The true difference in proportion of seniors who participate in activities versus the proportion of juniors who participate in activities is between negative 0.0784 and 0.1814. So I don't know what P1 and P2 really are. This is estimating what is that difference between P1 and P2. And we think that gap, that difference is anywhere from negative 0.0784 to positive 0.1814, okay? So that's how you do a full two proportion Z interval problem. Now this particular problem has a kind of interesting scenario that pops up that I do wanna talk about. With this interval, we do go from negative to positive. I just wanna talk about what that means. If that difference was positive, what that would mean is I have more seniors than juniors who participate in sports. Because if I'm doing seniors minus juniors, a bigger number minus a smaller number, you should get a positive value. So if this true difference was a positive number, that tells you, yes, seniors, there's more seniors that participate in sports than juniors proportionally. If it's negative, think about what that means. That means if I'm doing seniors minus juniors to get a negative number, that would mean my seniors is smaller than the number or proportion of my juniors that is doing it. So I'm taking a small senior number, subtracting a large proportion of juniors. That's how you would end up with a negative number. And finally, what's included in this interval, and it's kind of uh, an interesting observation, is zero is in there. And think about if I'm finding the difference between seniors and juniors, how could you possibly end up with zero? The only way that would happen is if the proportion of seniors is equal to the proportion of juniors so that when you subtract them, yes, you would get zero. So this interval, even though this isn't a hypothesis test here, this interval is suggesting it's very well possible that the proportion of seniors and juniors is either seniors is higher than juniors, could be possible that juniors is higher than seniors, the opposite, or it's just equal to, okay? So it's a very interesting interval here when it's going from a negative to a positive, that's, that situation happens. If this interval is entirely positive, then you know for sure seniors is definitely larger than juniors. So just a little side conversation on what this specific example kind of resulted in. So again, this was a two proportion Z interval. You are going through panic. A lot of procedures are doubled up from a one proportion Z interval. Um, be definitely careful on that third assumption. Um, be careful with that formula because it can get quite messy.